We have two great apartment living options in Brownsville for UTB and TSC students. The Borders Apartments at 375 Medilla Luna Road is conveniently located on Highway 7783 and a quarter mile south of Sunrise Mall. Our second option, Los Cedros Apartments, offers countless comforts and is located at 1025 Wild Rose Lane. For an exclusive discount on your first month's rent, call the Borders Apartments at 546-1605 or Los Cedros at 542-1941. Both offers expire September the 30th. Welcome to the Collegian News webcast. I'm Victoria Prifo. And I'm Jonathan Baldwin. Here are this week's stories. The 69 acres on which Lincoln Park stands might become UTB property. Lady Quisada has the story. Last February, the Brownsville City Commission voted to donate 76.93 acres to the UT system in order to keep UT Brownsville downtown. However, UT Brownsville is going to pay $6 million to the city in order to relocate Lincoln Park. So the city of Brownsville decided they were going to try and gift us, gift us, 69 acres of property. And that's the land that you see down at the bottom. That land, if you drive by today, is the Lincoln Park. And all of the land adjacent to that, which was once the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Park, our land uh, for the, for the, for the uh, corridor. The corridor no longer exists, so that's not useful for the fish and wildlife. And we agreed to help the city of Brownsville relocate the park closer to the residents in South Coast. Asked why the university would have to pay $6 million if the city donated the land, the president replied. The city already has land where they think this will work, so they don't have to buy the land. And so the $6 million will go to literally moving the equipment or whatever it is for starters that they have over to the new place and designing a new park. So I guess you could say that the, that the land costs us $6 million. In an interview after the September 17th Brownsville City Commission meeting, the Collegian asked Mayor Tony Martinez why UTB has to pay $6 million for land that was donated by the city a relocation type of situation and uh, you know we'll be discussing it with them so that we can make sure that we allocate or do the right thing for the city of Brownsville in the sense of replacing whatever it is that we may have you know uh, thought would be better use for a university versus a park at this particular time but we will we'll make we'll make it even we'll make it even UT Brownsville will not take ownership of that land until it has helped the city identify the land for its new park and pay the city for the relocation of the park to a new site. We still have to sign the papers. We haven't done that yet because they're doing things like um, appraisals and, and they have to actually get the legal boundaries of the property. That takes weeks. As soon as that's done, then the city will have to begin the process of identifying where they want to relocate to. As soon as that's done, then we start talking about now that we know where it's going to be, the new park, then designing a park for the new space. Then it's building the new space out, and then we'll be able to move in. So we'll, we'll be okay because we don't need the park, the Lincoln Park property right now. We have plenty of other land that we can build on. So it's okay that it takes time. It's better that you, you take it slow and make it look like you want it to than to rush into. The university will pay for the land with its allocation from the Permanent University Fund. UTB received a total of $44.8 million from the PUF this summer. Garcia said the PUF monies will be distributed quarterly. The next distribution is in November. UTB has already made a request of $150 million. Reporting for the Collegian News, I'm Clady Casada. Student Government Association President Juan de Dios Flores has resigned from his position. Reporter Victoria Brito Try to find out why. As of September 16th, Juan de Dios Flores has resigned as president of SGA. Vice President of Administration Stephanie Mendez is now president. As per our constitution, it says that in the permanent vacancy of the president, the vice president of administration will go ahead and assume the position of, of president. So I just wanted to go ahead and, and announce that to you all. He, he went ahead and resigned and his 
designation was accepted? Francisco Lozano, a senator for the College of Science, Mathematics, and Technology, tried to explain to the SGA that Flores had withdrawn his resignation. Uh, Juan Dios Flores has, as of this morning, emailed yourself uh, taking back his resignation. In an interview with the Collegian via telephone from Matamoros, Flores said he's in a difficult situation. You know, I'm unable to be at the university, I mean physically, so that's been a great burden for me to pass legislation. Flores' resignation was confirmed and accepted by the SGA and their advisors. The SGA constitution states that a resignation does not need to be voted on. In other business, Francisco Lozano was elected as Senator Pro Tem. Freshman applications have been submitted and four representatives will be appointed immediately. With the Collegian News, I'm Victoria Brito. UT Brownsville President Juliet V. Garcia has not decided whether she will apply for the presidency of the new university in South Texas. Reporter Marlene Rodriguez filled us in. At the end of the month, a search committee will be formed to determine who will be president of the new university. UT Brownsville President Juliet V. Garcia said she doesn't know if she will apply. The president will be chosen either at the end of this year or the beginning of the spring, Garcia said, adding that she does not know who has applied for the position. And so I just haven't decided yet, finally, whether or not I'm going to apply. Although she doesn't know what she will do if she is not president, Garcia said she must always be an advocate for Latino education and for women. I am an advocate. That's what I know how to do. I am loud and, um, and have always had to speak um, without constraints about what I think is important. Jenny Lacoste Caputo, executive director of public affairs for the University of Texas system, said no one has applied for the presidency as of September 19th. Reporting for the Collegian News outside the office of the president, this is Marlene Rodriguez. Last Tuesday, students gathered at the Student Union Veranda to celebrate the 226th anniversary of the U.S. Constitution. Reporter Kayla Cotreras was there. The Center for Civic Engagement enlightens students with knowledge about the history of the United States at its annual Constitution Day event. The center hosts an observance of Constitution Day every year for students to become more aware of the history of the document. The event also featured a mock voting poll and a Constitution trivia game. During the UTP observance, members of the Reserved Officers Training Corps marched with the U.S. and Texas flags while a recording of the Star Spangled Banner played in the background. Pedro Rangel, a senior accounting major and Center for Civic Engagement scholar, helped prepare the veranda for Constitution Day along with the other scholars. Uh, for the planning, there was a lot of planning. Uh, there was uh, meetings throughout the, the semester, well, in the beginning of the semester, two or three meetings prior to the event. We were, uh, we were doing from planning to uh, donations to help from the organizations on campus, as you can see here, and from the community as well. Corina Reina, a junior special education major and president of Sigma Psi Delta, shared what she learned from attending. So I should um, vote, I should register to vote, get my voice out because I, that is my right. I, we are supporting the 19th Amendment as a woman, that is my right and I can make a difference with just one vote. Guest speaker Cameron County Judge Carlos Cascos talked about the importance of the First Amendment. Remember why you're here. Remember why you're able to assemble. Remember that you can stand on a street corner and say whatever you feel like saying. People may not listen to you, but you've got the right to say it. Guarantee, I think Benjamin Franklin said something like, you know, we don't guarantee, we don't guarantee your happiness, but we do support and guarantee your pursuit of it. And that's what's important. For the Collegian News, I'm Kayla Contreras. Dozens of people attended the local observance of Mexican Independence Day at Texas Southmost College Art Center. Reporter Monica Gurino tells us what happened. Even though it was a rainy night, many people came to celebrate the anniversary. What is the significance of El 16 de Septiembre? The significance of the 16th of September for us is one of the greatest moments because we became independent from, from Spain. The event included several dances from different regions of the country. Tastuanes of Jalisco, Norte de Tamaulipas, La Cuna del Huapango, and Son en Fusión, both of Veracruz. 
Consul Rodolfo Quilantan Arena and his wife, Patricia Tapia de Quilantan, took the stage along with a replica of La Campana de Dolores that Miguel Hidalgo y Costilla rang on September 16, 1810. ¡Vivan los héroes que nos dieron patria y libertad! ¡Viva! ¡Viva la independencia de México! ¡Viva! ¡Viva Hidalgo! ¡Viva! ¡Viva Morelos! ¡Viva! ¡Viva Allende! ¡Viva! ¡Viva Aldama! ¡Viva! ¡Viva José Ortiz de Domínguez! ¡Viva! ¡Viva Matamoros! Among those attending the event was Stephanie Castrejón, a sophomore biology major. What did you like about this event? Uh, all the dances uh, were really good and the videos showed a little bit more about each part of Mexico. For the Collegian News, I'm Monica Udiño. In this week's Real World, reporter Brenda Lopez speaks to Sarah Naranjo, a graduate student in business administration who took part in the study abroad program in Denmark and Sweden. Yes, my name is Sarah Naranjo and I'm a graduate student in the MBA program. Please tell me about your experience in study abroad in Denmark and Sweden in this summer. Well, the program it was most about experiencing other cultures. In the case of Denmark and Sweden, they share this, a border even though they have a same or very similar culture. And we went to see there because here in Matamoros and Brunswick we have a similar synergy that they have over there. What was the purpose of the program? Well, it was to expose the students to other cultures and other ways of doing businesses. Uh, what did you do over there specifically? Well, we visited different government offices, we visited industrial parks, innovation centers, and also we visited important companies such as Tetra Pak, which is one of the worldwide leaders in packaging material. How did this further your education? Well, I think for business students and all the students in general, it's important to get exposed to globalization because at a certain point of careers, we will be forced to work with people from other side of the world. What are your career goals? Well, after I finish my master's degree, I'm planning to do a PhD in operations and research management. What advice would you give to students who haven't participated in programs such as this? I think it's important to take the experience in international and in, in study abroad program because you get the experience firsthand what people think, how people do things differently than you, and it's not safe or healthy at this point in time in the globalization to think that we have the only way, the only right way to do things. So by taking advantages of this program, you get to experience other ways of doing things. Why is education important to you? Well, I think education is the cornerstone to achieve not only your personal goals, but the society and the evolution itself. So I think to study something that you like is very important because at the end it's, you will be passionate about what you do. For the Collegian News, I'm Brenda Lopez. In this week's I Think, students give Brenda Lopez their opinion on why they chose to attend UTB or TSB. Why did you choose UTB? Because it's closer to my house and because my parents forced me to come. Why did you choose UTB? I chose UTB because it was a cheaper tuition and it was closer to home. Why did you choose TSC? Well, it has a really great value, TSC, and it's a really new uh, community college, and I'm really interested in new, uh, new things. ¿Por qué escogiste venir a UTB? Bueno, yo vivo en Matamoros y creo que Estados Unidos tiene mejores oportunidades de trabajo para mí. For the Collegian News, I'm Brenda Lopez. The UT Brownsville men's soccer team has upset the top team in the nation. Sports editor Sergio Mata has more on the story. The men's soccer team continues to find success, winning six consecutive games on the road, including a victory against number one University of Mobile. Great, great win. You know, really proud of the guys. They worked extremely hard, and you know, we, we deserve to win as well. You know, the game was close, but we had the better chances, and you know, fortunate we came out. So it felt great. Midfielder Victor Pareras earned the Red River Athletic Conference Offensive Player of the Week. Uh, it's my first time to the Awinda and it was amazing and like my parents are proud of me and I'm proud of myself as well. Forwards Ricardo Daigues and Carlos Acevedo were major factors as well in the games against Mobile on September 13th and William Carey University on September 14th. Uh, I felt really proud. I knew that I was going to get a few minutes and if I, if I could help my team I could 
and I could score, I would you know, give always my 100%, and thank God it got the goal. The two victories catapulted the team to number 15 spot on the National Association of Intercollegiate Athletics poll on September 16th. The women's soccer team split the games in Alabama the same weekend. After beating the University of Mobile 3-2 September 13th, the Ocelots were shut out by William Carey University. The girls were practically, you know, um, uh, truly inspired and, you know, they played their hearts out in the field. Forward Isadora Feita scored twice in the game against Mobile, while midfielder Jessica Santa Cruz made one goal. Oh, I really feel really good because um, that team is really hard for us. It's a good team and we beat them. The Ocelots are looking to bounce back against Division II Texas A&M International University today at 3 p.m. The volleyball team continues its undefeated season with a victory over Texas College September 14th, three sets to zero. Um, conference play is just a little bit more the same as what we saw last weekend. There's a, there's a few teams in there, uh, St. Thomas, Our Lady of the Lake, that are going to challenge us. But for the most part, it, it's teams that, that may not necessarily push us. So our, our biggest goal is to, to get better on our side of the net and, and play our level of volleyball no matter who's across from us. Right side hitter Michelle Marquez and outside hitter Anais Doctor each contributed with seven kills. Setter Xiao Yu Guo had 13 assists for the Ocelots. The coach always telling us like you know talk talk, so we have to more like work on the communication and the push all the girls together. Even we play like not really good teams, like we have to stay like our level. UTB will play at 1 p.m. Saturday at home against the University of the Southwest. For the Collegiate News, I'm Sergio Mata. Until next time. Thank you for joining us this week. I'm Victoria Bito. And I'm Jonathan Baldwin. Have a great week.